So uh, you talked about the African free trade arrangement. Area. Yes. Okay. Now, first of all, before we go yes. into that, into that uh, free, free trade uh, area, what is your view about free trade in itself? Uh, in the country or overall? About over, overall, the, the general view of free trade. What do you see? Uh, I think, uh, I, I think uh, it's a very good approach. Okay. One, going to bring, it's going to make more, more hundred years, millionaires, billionaires, and I think trillionaires. Okay. The question is going to be where are Africans going to be positioned? Okay. In, in, in the category of that, mm. because it's at this point that we need to look at me as a Ugandan. What the, what does it mean to my child? The biggest problem we find today is we we don't have generational wealth. Yeah. Everyone, everyone, most people in my in in my age. Are building wealth from ground up. Yeah. So the problem that creates that even when you want to participate on the round table in the conversation of business at a free trade area, you're cut out. Mm. However skilled, there's only so much you can do if you're looking at becoming an entrepreneur. You're going to be left to work or you work as utilize your salary or the securities of and to earn the trade capital. Yeah. Raised through financial institutions for you to execute that. And the other problem is, I think very many Africans are short term. They're sh- they, they don't look five, 20, 10 years down the road. Okay. I'm talking about... Uh, and this is something that I think crossed my mind five, 10 years down the road. It's good to start a local restaurant, a local food restaurant. Okay. How, but the question is, are those, is that restaurant ever going to multiply? Okay. And have 10, five chains down yeah. Africa? Okay, very good. Very good question. Yeah. Yes. You want to run Adobe or dry cleaners outlets? What is it going to be for you or for your children five years down the road? Good. That's good. If you are choosing to offer accounting services, are you just looking at Uganda? Or is it going to explode? Good. Explode. Now, if you don't examine those, you're going to find yourself in a circle and your children are going to struggle. Okay. Five Two years down the road, even after your death. No, no, two two generations after. Yeah, because no, you're, 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 two, two yeah. generations are very far. I'm talking. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm talking about two years of into retirement of someone. Oh, okay. Yes, because at that point you're looking at savings. Our education system is becoming more expensive more than ever, mm. but it's becoming expensive at the expense of innovation. Okay. It's becoming expensive with innovation. Very good. If it's becoming expensive with relevancy, very good. But the problem is one is being left out in the process. Some aspects are being left out. So you'd have a graduate, a university student that Yes, they've educated them five years into university, but they can't go beyond. Uganda Why? Why? With skill set. It, that's where I'm coming from, the mind. Exactly. At which you start with. Uh, I have friends that some run pharmaceutical businesses, they run uh, restaurants, they run uh, shoe, second shoe, second hand shoe collections, they run tech companies, but they've not thought out of the borders. Right now, we're in the process of registering the PR company in Ghana. 
Why? Because I realized when you offer the service to one of the clients, they like your service. They're like, we're also rebranding in, in Ghana. Would love to have your services there. Yeah. Now it's one thing you, you can fly in and fly out, but it costs you much more for you to fly in and fly out. You'd make more profit, but long term you cut out your opportunity to expand in that country. Mm. You get me? Mm. Because when you start out, most businesses you struggle to get your first client. Yeah. In a market. Here you are, you're in a foreign market, you've registered, and you have a first client that yeah. is going to probably pay you your first two, three, six months employee and sell and uh, and rent. Yeah. So now that mind that I can go beyond the borders, I can go beyond my local society. That's where now it's going to be for Africans. That as you're comfortable with selling pineapples in Uganda, someone in Kenya is going to think, okay, what does Uganda need most? They need uh, Irish potatoes from Kenya. How do I get them to Kenya, to Uganda, and then get the pineapples they have across the border? Very good. It's going to present more opportunities, but those that are not uh, those that are not quick to adopt are going to either be cut out of business one, mm. or they cannot grow beyond particular profit margins and yeah. business growth. Yes. So, so tell me, tell me, do African governments and Uganda do they adopt the free trade position? Limited, limited tariffs and entry, yes, yes, entry yes. and exit. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen it with Uganda and Kenya and the East African community so far. What we have is working. It's just that at some point we had disputes, uh, disputes between Uganda and Rwanda, but were resolved. Uh, yeah. But it's working very well, very, very well. Uh, some of the issues now I have observed because during COVID as exporting foods and eggs uh, beyond Uganda and Kenya, and some of the issue is the road network. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, an example, some of the road system connecting these two places were constructed 10, five years, seven years down the road. We're still relying on an infrastructure of seven years. The, the cars, the vehicles, the trucks have increased on the road. You have, uh, a lane per, per route. Yeah. This means if I'm so, going this side, I have one lane. If I yeah. have, I'm going on the opposite side, I have one lane. Yeah. The implication on that is the time we could have spent is made twice, uh, twice or double, or you're going to lose two, three hours mm. in the process of traveling a, pro a, a, a period you'd have traveled for a quarter of that time. Yeah. See, I understand this. Okay. Travel, yes, is the most difficult part of Africa. Yes, and yes. See, I, I see. This is something that uh, many people don't uh, realize mm. because of African rivers. Yes, not being navi navigable. That was a major thing that uh, didn't allow trade mm. across borders in Africa for yeah. a long time ago. Okay, yes. for a long, long time. Okay? Mm. Because in the era when there were no, no cars, no whatever, the world trade was done by water. Yeah, true, true, okay. true. And because you can't navigate African rivers for mm. a long stretch of, uh, of uh, uh, long stretch of areas, yes. you didn't have trade among mm. different uh, villages or reg uh, regions and all that, you know. So 